Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. That was one Joe Bryant, who was in a fuzzy purple Twitch shirt, as often happens. I am one Venstone, who was in a gray fuzzy pullover zippy shirt that I just happened to have put on when I got back in the house this morning, and I've been wearing it all day. It's my new best friend. (laughs) Even though it's not cold outside, Ben? Not terribly. No, not at all. Yeah. No. It's like six. It's kind of summerish. Here's Oh, I, okay. Yeah, cool. We were talking about that earlier this week is, um, you know, getting everything like right back in perspective when you have an entire week where it's like below freezing and then it's wow. back up into teens. You're, like, you're just smitten. Like, oh, <laughs> now you're, so you're overheated. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you got cold drinks. You're like, man, it's rough outside. Mm. So what's doing with you, man? What's going on? Oh boy! So it's it's been relatively cool here for us. Now we're weather wimps here in SoCal, <laughs> so it's been relatively cool, but nothing, uh, nothing that other people consider cold. <laughs> At least it's been dry, right? <laughs> no, it's been raining a lot. It has it has been. We've had a series of atmospheric rivers <laughs> of lots of rain. <laughs> But at least we're having breaks in between, which is nice because there were times in the past where we've had some storms that were so bad that lasted a couple of weeks that it continued to rain every day and we didn't have a break. And that was really, really bad. That was in the 80s. Oh, my. Yeah, we had tsunamis that year. <laughs> so anyways, all all is good. Uh, except for those that live in the foothills and then the in the burn areas, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I had a uh, really fun uh, last Friday. I won third place again in our Trackmania file finals. Yay! And I won the boss map and the laughing out loud map. Uh, we had we had a I had to uh, replay in a tie of, of three of us. So, but I won. Yay. <laughs> I'm you getting did. better. You did. I, I got the proof right here. I got it on our piece of science paper then uh, where I keep st- all the digital stuff, all the technology I'm surrounded or how, how do you keep score for our track mania with a pen and paper? Yeah. <laughs> how retro. Oh, Steve husband will be proud then because <laughs> you're using pen and paper. <laughs> I, I have an entire ream of sliced dead tree that I will never be able to use for my entire life. I don't have printers. I don't use paper. I go out of my way to avoid using papers. It's like having books. <laughs> I'm like, why do you have so many tree corpses? And, uh, but yeah, this, hey, if it works, right? Yeah. It, I, I still sometimes take notes. My handwriting's yeah. atrocious, but you know I can kind of keep up with some of the numbers. And I, all I have to do is write down the names when we get done uh, racing and, and do a little bit of arithmetic. And then we sometimes, sometimes people will have uh, ties at the end of it. So yeah, they have mm-hmm. to do death match, and the death match always takes place on the first map of the night, which is the silly one. Which yeah. is it works out for the best. It works. The out laughing out best. loud map, the one that's that's hard to get the through. The laughing <laughs> out loud map. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> Have you heard of this internet? Yes. <laughs> With the emojis, well, the laughing kind of, out loud. It's kind of a, a raffle map, too. <laughs> the um, LOL is an entire category in Track Mania. Yeah, um, it is. <laughs> if you want to get worse than LOL, there's another subcategory called khaki. Oh, I haven't played those. I wouldn't expose you guys to them yet. Um, oh, okay. They're, they're, we're, we're doing it like a parfait, layers. <laughs> okay. A little, little bit at a time, gradually going into it. We're doing it. Um, you know, you you got to keep it fun, but you got to keep it challenging. And like we're fifty four weeks in, so we're yeah, we're mm-hmm. closely approaching the level of rank amateurs. Yeah, it's pretty nice. It is nice. Pretty nice. So I discovered something. I had to install Windows ten. This week for, this is not, yes, it's the second time I've installed Windows 10. The first time I installed Windows 10, and for the same thing, okay, no, I take that back. Well, same genre of things. Mm. So I have built the rectangle that Jill's using right now. This is the 5600G 
micro ATX old thermal note box. If you're a patron, I, uh, that video was up for you. I've edited it because it was two different streams. I sliced them together. It's like a five hour stream. If you want to see me put one of those together, install Debian, install steam, set up proton, hackle manically, reset a stream because the fiber optic card didn't pick up correctly. And you know, it's good times, good times. Um, go back and watch that. But I had the spare box, the old Jordan box for a hot spare. And I'm like, before I just go ahead and clone this box, let me do something I've been meaning to do for. And I looked back up since 2019 when I bought an M Audio ProFire 2626, which is a really good FireWire interface. And I'm working on this FireWire thing. And I'm like, I've always wanted to put this thing in standalone mode, but it required oh. <laughs> having the dun, Windows dun, drivers. Dun. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> no fun. No, it's like I genuinely need to plug this thing in, flip one switch, and I'll never have to mess with it again. The last time I installed Windows 10, I had installed it on a mechanical hard drive inside that same box because when I originally got those PCs, they had um, just uh, spinny drives in them. You know, just whatever, little cheap ones. And I'm like, well, I got this drive. Let's. And I took a day to install Windows 10. I'm like, this mm -hmm. is ridiculous. I, I, yeah. I was coming in and checking on it. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Like, Especially since, you know, even on a spinning rust drive, you can install Linux in under 20 minutes, you know? <laughs> It's uh, it, it, it's just like wild, man. I'm and there's no information. It's like unpacking files or moving files. I'm like, whatever, whatever. I just like, mm, you're still working. Anyway, I got that installed, and that was a different time. I had to test out a piece of hardware for uh, Sweetwater and uh, and Behringer, and confirm something for an RMA. But I came back because I'm like, ooh, I got that Windows 10 install. I did, I did yesterday. I, I can finally, and I dug this thing out and um, brought it in here, plugged it up, cut it on. The spitty drive had died. Oh, poor Ben. <laughs> of what I can only assume Jill Bryant was shame. Oh, you never couldn't. even got a chance to hear the click of death? It, it's just gone. Like the controller's just, dead on it. There's oh, nothing. Didn't it, even fire up. <laughs> no, oh, it spins up, but it doesn't pick up anything. Oh, okay. Right. And I'm like, whatever. That was the last time I installed Windows 10. And before that, I think the last time I installed Windows was maybe 98. I know I installed the Windows 3.11 to 95 upgrade. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did. I had to think about this. And this is not like some weird internet humble brag. I've just, I guess, for, you know, benefit or detriment, I haven't installed a lot of Windows. Yeah. Um, Windows 10. I got it up and running. I plugged in the FireWire card. Two Windows credit picked up the FireWire card. Oh, yeah, very good. Because that's been an issue lately. Uh, <laughs> well, it's and, not a Windows 11, but... <laughs> right. To its credit, because it surely couldn't pick up the fiber optic card that was in the box. Oh. <laughs> it couldn't do that, and it couldn't... What really shocked me was it wasn't able to see the onboard networking. For like a Dell 3010. I'm like, how, oh. how not? Then again, I might yeah. have done something wrong. I had no idea what I was doing. I was trying to get to the desktop. Got to the desktop. The whole point of this story is Windows 10 installed empathy. It installs empathy in people. Because mm. I was able okay. to see it through your eyes, my brothers and sisters out there who were just <laughs> starting to play around with Linux. I was able to experience what it was like having no idea, having to Google every single step in order to get to the driver thing to click on it. Yeah. And it was <laughs> blind luck that I found it because there was an application. In, okay. Correct me. I look forward to the feedback. You install something. Okay. I had the drivers. I had the drive Firewire drivers for the M audio audio interface. I double click it. And, you know, these drivers are from like 2013, but apparently they still work allegedly and they installed no errors. How do I get to that application? No wonder it's done. Because so I click start thing, gives me a search. I don't know what that thing's called. I have no idea what to search for. And like, yeah. then I start digging through and I'm having to like learn. I'm like, where does the application show up? How about drivers? I finally get into a system, something that used to look like what was like the hardware browser type thing. Yeah. And it just said audio drivers. And just randomly, I clicked on that. And the application was hidden behind that. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> but I feel you. I feel yeah. you. Because <laughs> that's got to be what it's like messing with Linux for the first time. Yeah, absolutely. Because you have no point of reference. And like, yeah. I, I, I can point and I click on things, but I do this and I do this. But what I didn't do and what I'm not doing now, everybody, blaming Windows. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just like, you know, it, it's, it's like what, what we talk about all the time. Uh, you know, everyone, you know, a lot of people don't like that Linux is different. Well, you know, at one time, one point in time, they had to learn Windows. Like, Ben is having to relearn Windows now. <laughs> yeah, we're done with that experiment. But people yeah. absolutely forget about that. But what they want yeah. to do is not accept <laughs> that they don't know it. Mm. You know, you don't, yeah. no one wants to say, oh, man, I don't know how to do this. No, no, no. See, it was <laughs> stupid. It was dumb. <laughs> it just didn't work. And I'm like, I, see, I walked into Windows tonight. I was like, I don't know how this thing works, man. Like, I've tangled with this thing enough to know that, uh, that I don't like how, like, where did, where did the start menu stuff go? That's what I knew about Windows 10. Because every time I started, I'm like, that's done. First thought that mm -hmm. goes through my head every single time. That's dumb. That's a bad design. However, maybe they fixed it in Windows 11. Who knows? But I was on the Googles, just typing in, but I was doing Windows 10 searches instead of like Linux searches. And hey, we got it. We got it. And I formatted that drive and I did a happy dance. And uh, yeah, there we go. Yay. <laughs> Good job, Ben. You <sighs> learned Windows. Or the more no, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. Because, you know, a man, with some of the sad sacks I see on uh, YouTube lately, I should start a YouTube channel with that amount of knowledge, giving people Windows 10 tips. Yeah. Because they do it for <laughs> Linux, Jill. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the only time I've, I've uh, recently installed uh, Windows is to get some RGB devices working, <laughs> like mm. lights and whatnot on to systems be perfectly that are clear. I don't have any problem with Windows. Like, those days are yeah. gone, man. I, I, I like the whole like, oh, let's like get in an argument about an operating system i might have engaged in that like 17 years ago i'm old i don't have to have for that uh <laughs> it's just a different operating system like whatever i can throw people up I was like let's go play with hp ux or aix or something like that yeah um <laughs> it, it seems like a very silly silly operating system but it I, it, it was what fascinated me was being able to look at it through that lens of, I don't, no idea how to do this. And, you know, this, this mm -hmm. isn't, and it was one of those, it's not a regular thing either. You know, there wasn't a lot of help on the internet. Yeah. So it was like so, one of those, like, I couldn't find, you know, yeah, Google was basically like, here's a post from like 2016, maybe that's kind of, you know, it was one of those things. I'm going to have to piece this together. And again, it was just like blind luck that I actually found it. Um, that would have been a fun thing to record, but I didn't for my own sanity. So yeah, Windows 10 installs empathy. That's the moral of the story. So nice. <laughs> let's talk about Nitrux. Yeah, Nitrux. <laughs> There's a new version out, and it's FF. Which, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> man, I don't know. Like FF, like that's a bold name for something, isn't it? it because it stands for forbidden fruit. <laughs> <sighs> I mean, we're talking about a Linux distribution that ships with Licrix. So keep that in mind because, hey, are you bored with regular distributions? You know, mm -hmm. if you want something that's like Debian unstable, what maybe a couple of extra steps thrown in. Nitrix is always something you got to play around with, you know, and it's got just, just to keep things interesting and lively. It's also got extra packages from Ubuntu LTS. That's a bonus. And you get to install things with app images. No. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, with this, you could always go back and install apps, you know, just using dpackage an app, right? That's like, yeah. not a big deal. I do that all the time on Debian. And uh, could, could, because the latest version is going to limit you to using your choice of app images. And that's it. Yay. That's it. That's all you get to use. Um, wait, hang on. Having the, I got to read this. The peculiar <laughs> yes. choice of this code name is because, as is, this version of the distribution can be seen as the antithesis of conventional Linux distributions, where a distribution is entirely devoted to a package matter. But this distribution is not. The point is to drive home that this distribution, app images are the preferred method of adding new applications, and where an app image is unavailable, 
having the okay so you can use a flat pack jill if you yes you like, can <laughs> really super nice and desperate you can use a flat pack uh this this is kind of like debian's version of silver blue but with drugs maybe I yeah <laughs> that's a good description Ben. <laughs> maybe you just need to immutable all the things i know that's the hot thing everyone's going for yeah yeah well um i really like uh Nitrix, because of the one reason is the desktop environment is the NX desktop. It's it's really nice. It's it's basically KDE Plasma enhanced with what it calls uh, plasmoids, and I think it's a, it's it's a nice go between between uh, KDE and a little. It, it, in in some ways, it actually reminds me a little bit of Enlightenment. <laughs> so I like the desktop a lot, and. You know, I had installed the previous version of Nitrix on one of my machines because I wanted to play with the NX desktop and test out its immutable capabilities. And I love the fact that it uses my favorite containerized format by default, App Images. So this this one is a good one for me. Actually, I had it uh, installed, uh, an older version installed on a laptop for a while. And whenever I needed to test App Images for LWW, I would uh, fire it up. <laughs> and use that and uh what's nice in this version is pipewire is now default with the addition of the pulse audio equalizer and it uses wayland by default and yeah as Van was saying earlier this nitrix release is using the licorice uh, kernel 6.1 which is a distro kernel replacement that's been optimized for gaming and multimedia and oh, this, is, yeah. this is the worst website <laughs> it is very busy yes <laughs> I, I, i've been trying this entire time like can i get some screenshots yeah <laughs> it's like, nope maybe i can use the hamburger menu uh-uh uh, does these do anything maybe <laughs> i don't know uh yeah uh mm -hmm. if, if you like the kde plasma thing man and app image mm -hmm. you know what it's interesting though isn't it isn't that kind of yeah it's really nice i I love any distro that makes a new desktop environment too. That's just my jam. The more more uh, uh, window managers and desktop environments, the better. <laughs> well, I think that's going to lead us I right like in <laughs> to the next bit. Something that I think maybe would work better as an app image because I couldn't get it to work. Uh, oh, as, uh, okay, yeah. So what Ven is speaking of is an application called Monitorettes. Monitorettes is a, is a new, simple, and cute system monitor tool for Linux, and it's like an applet or a widget for your Linux desktop. And Monitorettes presents a live overview of how aspects of your system are functioning, but it doesn't do anything else. It it's there to sit and 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 show you, uh, you know, live stats and look pretty. Um, but it, it does its job well. Um, it monitors CPU, GPU, memory, network, downlink and uplink, your home folder space, your root space, and temperature. It does the temperature really nicely. And you can choose which re resources you want to have visible. And you can also choose between system, light, or dark themes, and a vertical or horizontal layout and settings. And I actually had it running for several hours on um, the computer I was doing show notes on in vertical mode and in dark mode. And it, it actually brought back memories of how cool it was to always have one running on your desktop to show what elite hackster you are. <laughs> yes, we have lots of system monitoring tools on Linux, but this one is compact and reminds me of my favorite beloved doc apps from Window Maker. Because yes, I do run Window Maker still. <laughs> and this reminds me of a retro times, but in a, with a modern look. <laughs> I just had to sit back for a moment and brace myself and just relax and decompress. And I'm like, I'm using Flatpak to install something that's 96.2% Python. Yeah, <laughs> this is true. Yes. <laughs> just going to let that slide. But I, clone they get. It's using Messon, Mison. Started to get mm -hmm. that set up, got it to build, installed it. It started complaining about some GL stuff, and I start looking around and start going through. It's like I don't care. Mm. So uh, yeah, that's as far as I got with it. Uh, it's flatback. 
You know, I, I was I was tracking down like the runtime errors and like this is, okay, maybe I understand mm -hmm. why it's in a flat pack, but maybe put it in an app image if, if at all possible. Yeah, that's a good idea. And then uh, we can use it for as default on Nitrix OS. <laughs> maybe. But I <laughs> I'm the wrong person for this. I'm like the overhead of running a containerized app to monitor system performance, the irony is not lost on me. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but then again, Actually, just to have a nice uh, Deb, it would be yeah, nice. I mean, the yeah. OMG and Ubuntu. That was OMG and Ubuntu that was talking about it, right? I want to get that right. Uh, yeah. OMG and Ubuntu. They got a point. I mean, this is like a plasmoid on steroids, you know? Yeah. It's like, it's a, that's the right way to think about it. And I mean, you know what? It's aesthetically pleasing. You look at it and you're like, oh, it's mm -hmm. not bad looking. And some people take that and it's good having a dark mode. Yeah. It's really nice in dark mode because it has all the... Each uh, stat shows in a different color, which right. is really nice. Red, and green, blue. Mm -hmm. it, it's got a fascinating name. Mm hmm I know. <laughs> Me and Ben were talking about this <laughs> before the show. <laughs> Every time I see the name of this app, I think of Tourette's Syndrome, <laughs> which is not fun. I mean, it's no, sad, it's you know. <laughs> but it's a unique name because I it did is. a Google search when you were um, talking about it just a minute ago, and it's like, that's how you get to the top of Google. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a unique name, just like our show, LWDW. Right? Not to be confused <laughs> with LWDT. Oh, okay. T yeah. or F. F, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the thing. Good news, everybody. OBS Studio 29.0 is out, and it's ready for public consumption. A uh, bunch of things in here. That you initially want to get excited about to realize that they're Windows only. Yeah, I'm talking about the AV1 encoder support for Intel and AMD. However, uh, a couple of new things in here. They've added the upwards audio compressor, which is called AKA an expander and a three band equalizer. Wonders will never cease that that's finally in there. WebSockets has been updated. They've added media key support in Linux. So if that's something you've been waiting around for, um, that's going to be able to link up with the XKB system, XUWORD system, and other. OBS VK codes, AMD AV1 encoder support, but again, it's Windows only, so it's, oh, maybe yeah. we'll get to see that show up for um, Linux sometime before the eventual heat death of the universe. <laughs> Within well, a year, let's hope. <laughs> or when the cards become available. I, you know, I'm looking at a bunch <laughs> of um, just like alternate things and being able to like get one of those cheap Intel cards with AV1 encoder, it's something I want to play around with everybody. Now, uh, they've done some improvements on the deck link. If you have a, I have an Intensity Pro that I'm using right now. So if you have a Blackmagic deck link and that's, uh, they've offloaded uh, something basically frame generation to the GPU. So instead of uh, your CPU having to render and like where we're using that is, uh, I use the deck link to generate the actual frames that Jill's getting. Mm -hmm. So we can do that in real time. You know, Jill's not, you know, what Jill's seeing is the same thing I'm seeing through the preview window, what you're seeing at home. So we always know what's going yeah. on, what's on screen. So we're not like having disconnected conversations of like, here's just me on the webcam in a room and here's Jill. They're like, no, we have yeah. to see how it's all <laughs> stuck together. Uh, the overhead on that's been sucked down quite a bit. I'm happy to see that. Another thing that's in the works is having CUDA support for video decompression under Linux. Very nice. I'm like, oh, that's really neat. Because if you see, you know, this, that's a video, you know? Mm -hmm. And that is, you know, 1080p60. And if you get that running, like, let's say, in the background, it's going to chew up a lot of uh, CPU cycles. Yeah. So absolutely. being able to push that off to CUDA, I'm like, okay, that, that's pretty neat. That's pretty neat. And that's not going to end 29 yet, but it's in the works because I saw it pop up and I actually made the, you know, because it's a real easy fix. It's a real easy th change to make, but I saw this and it turns out like, why wasn't this in OBS, Jill? This doesn't make sense. Why, why, why is this yeah, not available? Yeah, I, I just realized that. I, I didn't but, realize that CUDA wasn't enabled. <laughs> I didn't, didn't think about it. I yeah. was like, why is that not a thing? Well, it turns out... Uh, yeah, uh, apparently it caused Windows to crash a couple of years ago. They never went back oh, to... Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, it's known to cause crashes on Windows during initial testing a few years back, so please modify it. Uh, but maybe the, it won't cause crashing on Linux. 
Well, you see, <laughs> that's the old thing. They're going to make sure yeah. that they modify the commit to only enable CUDA on Linux until one has been adequately yay! tested. <laughs> Thank you, OBS devs. <laughs> I thought that's that was awesome. I thought that was a cute one. I'm like, yeah, that's mm -hmm. very good. <laughs> Silly Windows holding us back, but no, that's good. That's good. And hey, if you want to make that, if you if you're somebody that compiles OBS, like it's just adding a little bit to like decode.c, so it, it is real easy to do. Nice. Yeah, OBS Studio 29 also um, for those AMD and Intel GPU users. There is improved FFmpeg, Vappy, or video acceleration API enablement by there. It's now using the library VA directly to check device capabilities. So that's getting lots of improvements, which is awesome. That's really great. Cause I, I have a lot of AMD GPUs and Intel ones, and it'll be nice to have OBS working as well on those as the NVIDIA brethren in the, on the green team, which I have that too. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay Linus she doesn't mean it yeah <laughs> we're an AMD family here um, one of the things that is on the slate for 2023 is seeing what I can work with um, as far as hardware acceleration with um, the 5600G and see how much of that I can leverage but before I do any of that, I got to see what it's like, what the experience is, and like A B the actual experience with like something like OBS with um, the AMD encoder with the binary drivers for me. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I want to see what that tastes like. I want to see what that is. And uh, oh, yeah. I do want to point this out. Speaking of like AMD and hardware acceleration, if you were, mm, I'm not picking on anybody here. I'm not. I promise you. The flat pack version of OBS, the hardware acceleration uh, for AMD uh, encoding is broken with OBS 29. Oh, okay. I don't make those rules. I'm not reporting that as a victory lap. That was just brought to my attention yesterday mm. by somebody who uses the flat pack with AMD. Uh, and they didn't like that I said that they were just trying to save them from using the AMD uh, hardware encoder because it's really bad. Mm -hmm. It's really bad, Joe. Yeah, that's that's not good. <laughs> uh, hey, AV one eventually though, right? One yeah, day, maybe. No, I I'm really looking forward to that, and especially now that the AM, the a new AMD GPUs are supporting AV one. Very nice there, and it, it is and they're, interesting. And they're, Jill, yeah. they're super cheap. They're nine hundred ninety nine dollars. They're not a thousand dollars like the that Nvidia is, cards. You can get yes. them for. Under a thousand. <laughs> nine hundred nine to give them away. Yeah. <laughs> Might as well pick up two. Dude, I found Yeah. <laughs> I found the most ridiculous okay, we'll talk about that in just a second. Actually I'll show you. Okay. So, um <laughs> Before we get into a slice of pie, if you like what we do, we want to thank you for your support. Everything that you let us do in twenty twenty three. I have more stuff to get to this year than is comfortable to even think about think about <laughs> wow. but it's going to be a blast i'm going to be covering a lot of stuff and we're going to be doing a lot of stuff um as i don't like calling it a network just a collection of misfits and that's who we're we a are. network <laughs> jill uses it's, it's the word easier network. it's easier to think of it that way a byproduct of my hobbies uh, yes <laughs> so we want to thank each and everybody Every one of you, each and everybody, one of you. Yes, so you cover everybody. Patreon.com forward slash Linux team, guys. Supporting the show. If you kick us a buck a week, we do appreciate that. It gets you into our super secret Discord where we hang out the other six days of the week. Access to our Trackmania track server. If you're looking for a friend group, if you're looking for something, I was talking about that yesterday. I'm like, this is very important to have new things each and every week. Why? Because we're not getting any younger and we need to make our brains work learn new pathways, all that fun stuff. We get into it. We like to hang out and do that. If you like this show, mm. let's sweeten the deal a little bit. This show's like 30 minutes. We try to keep it 30 minutes until me and Jill get off on like a side tangent and it ends up <laughs> being like 45, 50 minutes. That happens. That's fair enough. But we're usually live for, you know, hour and a half, two hours, something like that. And it but doesn't fit in your schedule. You can't watch us live. We put that in a podcast for you. We have the video available and also the MP. 
threes. And I put up something for patrons, uh, I think yesterday, a five hour build of the rectangle. Very if nice. You ever curious. Hey, what is it like from step one, you know, voyeur type stuff? Like how does Venn build a micro ATX system? But also, how do you set up uh, Debian? We installed that live, set up Steam live, set up Proton live, played a game of Trackmania live. Mm -hmm. All of that, show you how easy it is to do. Had a great time doing it. And something I'm going to be doing on Sundays, I think that might have went live today, or might have went live yesterday. Jill popped her head in. Arthur hung out with me. Arthur kept me company. Arthur was the uh, nice. <laughs> Maddie. I, I did a test stream. Just like, mm, well, let's see if things are, what, what's going to blow up. And I discovered some things. Because I want to start, at least for a little bit, doing a stream on Sundays. When I'm editing Linux Gamecast Weekly. As an opportunity for people to show up and ask questions about media production under Linux. Because the more I look, the more I see the hand waving of it can't be done. This is why I'm using oh, Windows yeah. or Mac or whatever. <laughs> and I'm not a person to argue with anyone else online. So I think what I can do, the most effective thing I can do is just show up and start doing media production under Linux live mm -hmm. and say, hey. Wonderful. No, just come ask questions. You got thoughts, you got some hints, you got some allegations. Let's bring them. Let's do it. Let's work together. Let me show you how the, uh, professional end of this stuff is you know because there's plenty of people out there that's going to be playing with open shot they're going to be playing with katie in live mm -hmm. they're going to be playing with outdoor i'm going to be playing with reaper i'm going to be playing with davinci resolve you know so i, I think yeah. it'll be a good opportunity to get the other side of the coin and just show how flexible linux is so, thank you again for your support if you want to help us out in other ways, head over to linuxgamecast.com forward slash support. Do you have to go to forward slash support? Let's see. What do we got to do? Linuxgamecast.com. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got an about. Studio equipment. That's full of stuff. We got merch. Yeah, support. Merch. <laughs> uh, let's see. What does Jill have? What does Jill? Oh, wow. <laughs> I, I have uh, rainbow plushy penguins and mugs. <laughs> <laughs> and a keyboard stand on there, which I'm always needing those. <laughs> but I could always use another penguin for my collection. <laughs> That's horrifying, Jill. Uh, if, okay, the, the only upside to buying some of that RGB vomit nightmare stuff is you can send yeah. Jill a letter and she's going to have to read it, much like Absolutely. me. <laughs> However, uh, I do have one for the studio for a warning. You'll, your name will end up here unless you otherwise really, really, really don't want it. But that's how we publicly shame people. I wanted to show everyone what I felt when I came to video cards. This made me so happy that this exists because it's so dumb. This, this actually exists. Look at this. It's a water-cooled 4090, kids. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The water cool, yeah. <laughs> this is the dumbest, most ridiculous thing. No, okay, because what are we thinking about? Think about it like this. This thing could trip your PSU power breakers. <laughs> Because you're talking about something that yeah. can 600 watts. It can leak. <laughs> but that might be a good thing, Joe, because sometimes they catch on fire. Oh, boy. <laughs> Not good. I was looking uh, when I was shopping for an RX uh, 6900 from AMD. I, I saw one that was water-cooled. <laughs> and I'm like, why? <laughs> I, just, I mean, you know I understand what? why, but... Eh. Well, I I can, um, I, hmm. I, I get it with a 4090. If you've held a 4090, yeah, or if you've seen yeah. it is a four slot cart. Mm -hmm. Like it will take up the first two slots and the other two slots next to that. Like I could not put a 4090 in the thread boot room, even mm -hmm. having four by 16 slots. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> so yeah, I got to keep that beast cool. <laughs> It's so dumb, though. <laughs> so dumb. I, no, I, have no, I have nothing against like uh, water cooling GPUs. That's not the dumb part. Mm -hmm. The dumb part is compounding like the insane power draw these things have, like yeah. 650 yeah. watts. That the minimum, not even like the warning Jeep, uh, the warning PSU for a 4090 is 850 watts. Mm -hmm. Like, don't you dare even cut it on with less than that. Recommended yeah. like 1200. Yeah, but, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then you got to deal with that 12 volt high power connector that, you know, sometimes uh-huh. likes to melt. But don't worry, the leaks up put it on. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, I've water cooled my CPU, so I guess it's. I guess they're going to make water coolers for all the things. And it makes sense with the. the <laughs> Liz and video cards. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's dumb. I love it. I love just how absurd it is. Um, it's a testament to the arrogance of humankind. Uh, mm-hmm. So good on that. Thank you for your support. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Uh, if you got some extra change to throw in our base organs, uh, yeah, pick a tier. Come yeah. pop in. Come say hi. It's brilliant. Uh, mm-hmm. Cool. There we go. Now on to a new piece of uh, Raspberry Pi technology. Yeah, so the Raspberry Pi Foundation has just announced a new higher resolution Raspberry Pi camera called the Raspberry Pi Camera Module 3 with a 12 megapixel sensor and autofocus. And uh, it has the Raspberry Pi Camera Model 3 has a rapid phase detection autofocus. It has HDR mode up to 3 megapixels. And it can record full HD video at 50 frames per second with higher frame rates available at lower resolutions. And there is one of the cool things is awesome about this version of the Pi camera is there are now there's a new wide angle version and infrared variants. So now you can get a nice wide angle look like this uh, picture of this it looks like a castle in britain <laughs> and uh that's that's really sweet to have have the options for the different different angles and the the latest version of raspberry pi os actually comes pre-installed with the beta of the pi camera 2 python library to work so you can use it with home projects or for machine learning applications or any project you need to use it for and it is available from $25 with your choice of standard and wide lenses and with or without an infrared filter so when i checked it vin it was $36.26 for the wide angle camera at uh, vilros and $35 uh, at canakit so they are available, which is more than I can say for the Raspberry Pis themselves. <laughs> Small problem with Raspberry Pi accessories. <laughs> just, just, just a little tiny one, just a little tiny one. Because yeah. uh, before the show was like, um, maybe, maybe we can buy some Raspberry Pis now. Because, you know, we, we, we got this thing. Turns out, yeah, you, you can get your hands on a Raspberry Pi model too for 64 bucks. So there you go, kids. Oh. Um, <laughs> not even yeah. joking. Um, here's the sad thing. Here's the sad thing. We were initially looking at this. This is a Raspberry Pi model for 8 gig on Amazon for 207. My first thought was like, that's not a bad deal, mm-hmm. which is ridiculous, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, is <laughs> it that's is. $75. That's more than double. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> way more. Um, so, and yeah, the but, prices have actually come down, which is nice. <laughs> well, a little bit, because, I mean, there's competition, right? Like yeah. Like, we, we, we spent a better part of a month going through all of the uh, rock, rock chip stuff yeah. that is just <laughs> annihilates the Raspberry Pi hardware-wise and price-wise and availability-wise. Uh, yeah. Not necessarily, you know, ecosystem-wise or accessory-wise, but this is uh, one of the problems with anybody, not just Raspberry Pi, but anybody who releases Raspberry Pi. Traditionally, accessories is um, through a multi-year drop. Like, mm-hmm. like what do you do? It's yeah. Like, it, it's that dark cloud is always looming over announcements like these, which are otherwise just completely cool, awesome. You know, you get more for your money, but when you can't buy the thing that the accessory is for for the reasonable amount, it doesn't matter if it's twenty-five, thirty-five, forty-five, or fifty-five. Like, if I get a get a Pi Two on Amazon. That's reasonably yeah. affordable, right? Yeah, I know. I know. And I would just have to use my Raspberry Pi 4 or my Raspberry Pi 400 to hook up the camera. Because I'm, I'm not going to spend several hundred dollars <laughs> to buy an Come old on. Raspberry Joe, Pi. Joe, what's wrong with you? You need to spend 230 bucks for your $35 can- camera module. That's <laughs> yeah. Saving money somehow. Yeah. <laughs> 
I need yeah. to do something. I need to shut up and actually do something because I have um, mm-hmm. the uh, 12 megapixel interchangeable lens kit. Mm-hmm. And I got some lenses and I even got like a case. Maybe we'll do a stream one day. Uh, oh, that would be cool. And build a camera out of one of them, like a little uh, tripod type deal or something. Yeah, because these are amazing cameras. We've been covering them since the very first one on LWW. Yeah, I mean, the new one, the one they're talking about now is using the uh, Sony IMX 708. So, nice. you know, no longer, you're up to 12 megapixels like the ones that, you know, we bought like last year to play around with. And so that's double the sensor size. That's good. And especially for the price too, right? Because mm-hmm. like the ones I bought, those 12 meg, you know, the Sony lenses, like those lenses were like 60 bucks a piece, man. Yeah, and in what era would you think that, <laughs> that the camera would be and the camera lenses would be less expensive than the pies themselves? <laughs> That's weird, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like even like the like this camera module is like this was you know, it's it's priced accordingly, like twenty five, thirty five bucks. If it's like seventy five, you're like, Yeah, that's that's not bad when it's like this cheap compared to two hundred bucks. I'm like, man, nah, sure, give me two. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Well, let's let's hope uh, that even Upton CEO of Raspberry Pi, what he said is true, and that the second quarter things are going to loosen up. And we should be getting more supply of Raspberry. We got to see. We got to see. Always try to stay positive, but always stay positive, grounded in reality, everyone. Because even if you do get more, you're still getting more of the Raspberry Pi Four, which is three years old. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing. <laughs> Positivity. Grounded and real <laughs> So we just, we just keep on soldiering on. The yeah. All right, beautiful people. Joe, we got to get out of here. We're, of course we're running. 43 minutes. Why? Because I wanted to talk about Windows 10. Yeah, that's okay, man. <laughs> it, was, it was nice to hear your adventures. <laughs> awesome. All right, everyone. We're going to roll some credits. Thanks for watching. Love you all. Thank you to all our beautiful patrons. We have lots of wonderful thank people right now Thank you to Vin Stone. I don't know. Sometimes Jill reads her own name out too, so I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> thank you to Jill Bryant. <laughs> and to our advisors, Omegas and Artharon, who's in chat right now. And to our executive producers, Barbara and Scott M, Atomic, Mike, Empty, Drummer. It went by too quickly. I can't read them all. Our Chicago people, Super Dust Out. Our Sea Monsters. <laughs> <laughs> Ronald L and too many death notes. I can't read all, all our beautiful patrons' names. And our chairlings. Aw. Hey, thanks people. for letting us do this. Keep being awesome. And you know what? We'll see you next week. Yeah. Bye-bye. Love you all. With our, our fuzzy things on. Yes. We got our fuzzy sweaters. 